kickstart the program, we'll want to invite Dr. Efia Asante to give us an opening prayer. Thank you, Mr. MC. Thank you so much, Lord, for this opportunity. Thank you for the gift of life. Thank you for bringing us safely to this place. And we know that for those who are on their way, you also bring them and we say thank you. Father, we commit the program into your hands and we say take the stage. Lord, let your will be done. At the end of it all, we shall be careful to give you glory. We commit everybody going to speak into your hands, the MC, all of those who, all those who are doing presentations. And Lord, your will be done. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Santi. I knew you definitely put us in the spirit to be able to have a very successful meeting today. My name is Daniela Comensa. I'm the Executive Director for Health Keepers Network, and I'll be your MC for this morning section. Today, we're running two parts program. And the first part will be launching this year's Wealth Contraceptive Day, as well as the Family Planning Week. And in the second half, we'll be having our ICCCS meetings. And so for the first half of this meeting, we have selected to be the chairman for this section. No other person, one of our own, who has been a champion of the cause for which we all stand for family planning and supply chain in general. The chairperson for this program is going to be Diogratios Chimera. Dio is the country director for USAID's Global Health and Supply Chain Program and Procurement Supply Chain Management. Dio has over 20 years experience in international uh, experience in health system strengthening, including 15 years seven as chief of party or country director for centrally centrally awarded a multilaterally USAID health supply chain projects in Botswana, Tanzania, and currently in Ghana. Indeed, Joe Dio, in addition, has worked in health supply chain management in Uganda and played key role in the country's setup of the HIV logistics systems. He's done the same in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, by profession, Dio is a public health specialist and a pharmacist with unique passion for family planning and maternal newborn child health and a known advocate for contraceptive security. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for our chairman for this morning's World well Contraceptive Day, Dio. We would like to invite Upstage to support DO, the UNFPA country rep AI, Mr. Banamas, Banabas Yisa. Please welcome Upstage. <laughs> we would like to quickly follow it up with USAID Family Health Team Lead in the person of Mrs. Gladys Tetayabua. Gladys, please welcome our stage. We will also have our own Dr. Kofi Issa, Director of Family Health Division of Ghana Health Services. Dr. Issa will be followed immediately by Dr. Eisiado, Program Manager, National Control AIDS Program. Good. I think we are set now, and so I'll quickly uh, pass the microphone to the chairman for his opening remarks. Um, the UNFPA representative. Uh, 
the of USID, the Director of Family Health Division, Program Manager, uh, National AIDS Control Program, all directors present here, dignitaries from uh, different institutions, development partners, um, family planning key stakeholders, uh, members of the media houses, ladies and gentlemen. I welcome you to the launch of the uh, National Family Planning Week 2022 and the launch of the Atwa TV series. I wish to appreciate the Family Health Division and the Ghana Health Service in general for organizing this event annually and always ensuring that uh, Ghana is part of the World Contraceptive Day celebrations. We have never missed these celebrations and uh, thanks to Family Health Division on behalf of uh, the entire country for organizing events. I think they deserve an applause. Uh, family planning is a key resource towards improving lives of not only women but families. And uh, it's also a major contributor to the demographic dividends. And today we'll be hearing statements that uh, will assure us that uh, investments that have been put into family planning are indeed yielding some dividends. So it is on this note that I feel greatly honored uh, uh, to be your chair these sessions, and I encourage all of you to internalize the statements that will be made by the key stakeholders where possible, discuss and give input so that beyond this event, we are able to provide the relevant information, the relevant knowledge that is needed to address our theme of today's event, breaking the myth and mis in family planning. Unlike other commodities where when you present them, um, you know, the deserving clients will automatically utilize them for their conditions, family planning, just having commodity availability and contraceptive is not adequate. Many people do not have the adequate knowledge to break the myth and misconceptions that they have. So we look forward to hearing from today's statement on how best all of us here present can carry the message forward and educate our brothers and sisters out there to make sure that they don't miss out on this key opportunity of uh, benefiting from family planning services. On that note, and I welcome you to today's session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman, uh, for setting the tone for today's event. I quickly want to acknowledge some of our guests who are with us here now. We have in our midst Dr. Ismail Indufuna from UNFPA. Welcome, sir. We also have with us here Dr. Isabella Segomosis, Deputy Director, RCH. Dr. Segomosis, welcome. We have with here lawyer Evans Chumbarema, Procurement Supply unit of the from Ministry of Health. Welcome, sir. At this point, we will begin to receive messages from our partners. Let me reiterate once again that the team for this year's Family Planning Week celebration is breaking myths and misconceptions on family planning. We all know the various myths. Indeed, somebody recent one I heard that was so weird was that like the condoms is so tight that when you, you wear it, your thing grows slimmer. <laughs> so these are some of the myths and misconceptions that we need to deal with. He's still laughing, eh? <laughs> we have um, from messages from our development partners, which will be presented on behalf of all our development partners by UNFPA country representative AI, Mr. Yisa, Mr. Banamas Yisa. Let's welcome 
Barnabas Isa to the podium to deliver the message on behalf of our development partners. Mr. Chairman, uh, the VIPs on the high table, I would say, uh, development partners, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed. I would like to start by bringing you greetings from UNFPA and our development partners. As partners, we are very excited to be here today for the launching of the week dedicated to family planning. And the objective is to make family planning visible and create greater awareness about the usefulness of family planning in Ghana. How it is useful to women, to young people, and to men. It is clear that the right of women and girls to choose the number, timing, and spacing of their children is a clear fundamental human right. It is in this regard as a human right that family planning becomes extremely beneficial to the users. And it has different uses, as we all know. I am convinced that all of us here today, we know what family planning is and we know what the benefits are. But our purpose of coming together is to ensure that we transmit what we know and probably what we practice to the greater population of Ghana so they can also enjoy the benefits of family planning. By the 2021 census, the population of Ghana is youthful, which means the larger population of Ghana are in the stage where they desire family planning. But how many of those who need family planning actually get it? And whom shall we turn to to make sure that they gain it, they get it? It is very simple. We turn to those who have the knowledge and the skills to provide the services. And beyond that, those who can supply the needed commodities. And this is where the government of Ghana, the Ministry of Health, the Directorate of Family Planning, the National AIDS Commission, and all the partners become critically important. Because without working together, there is no way we can meet the demand for family planning. Of course, the theme for this year's family planning week or day is breaking myths and misconceptions on family planning. And there are several myths. One example was just given. But who creates these myths? Is it those who are demanding it or those who are supplying it? Or both? Of course, the answer to that question, I'm sure most of us know. A lot of those who desire family planning get one commodity or the other and refuse some simply because of myths and misconceptions. When you have myths like, if you use family planning, a woman can never be pregnant again. If you use family planning, you'll get cancer. If you use family planning, 
no man will look at you. If you use family planning, then the woman will refuse you. If you use family planning, then you are not, confined, you are not conforming to our cultural norms and family uh, guidance. With all this myth, how do we proceed? That is the purpose of this week. It is my hope that by the time we are rounding up this week, a greater number and population of Ghana will come forth to desire a greater use of family planning services. And this is where the challenge comes. The challenge to Ministry of Health, especially the Directorate of Family Planning and National AIDS Commission. How will you spare ahead the leadership to ensure that family planning gets to the rural areas deep down to the nooks and crannies of Ghana? And for the rest of us who are partners, what support shall we lend to government and other partners who are doing very much to ensure that those who desire family planning get it? And as Ghana moves towards FP 2030, in which case we are hoping by then we will meet all the needs of those who desire family planning by 2030. 2030 is just a few years ahead. But knowing the effort being put in Ghana, there is assurance that we can get to zero in terms of omit needs. Ladies and gentlemen, let me say finally that our collective effort is what will make us succeed. No individual, organization, or person can do it alone, not even the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health needs our support, and that is the support we should give. Thank you for listening, and I wish you all the best. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Isa. His question is, who creates the myth? Is it the demand side or the supply side? And that the Ministry of Health needs our help. All of us, we need their support to be able to be successful. We would like to call Dr. Joseph Edu, the Medical Director, Marie Stopes International Ghana, to deliver MSIG's address. Thank you very much. Mr. Chairman, um, SRH partners here present, ladies and gentlemen. Over the past 16 years, MSI in Ghana has been at the forefront with a firm belief that everyone from everywhere, from whatever background, should be able to choose whether and when to have children. By this, we've worked to provide SRA services to the people of Ghana and support government to achieve NMH and SRH indicator targets. And collectively, we've made significant progress. But as a country, the context has changed and certain crucial gaps still remain. We must critically appraise and address the contextual dynamics that at a glance seem unrelated to family planning, but critically affect access to services. So we at MSI are very excited about this year's theme, focusing on myths and misconceptions. We know that several sociocultural issues across our communities continue to hinder women and girls' access to family planning services. As we will all recall, a recent report from a pilot study on the inclusion of family planning in, on the NHIS benefits package gave us essential insight that removing cost alone is not enough to advance access. We need to develop and implement strategic SBCC interventions 
to address these myths and misconceptions, while also building critical partnerships with other national development sectors. As an organization, our strategic vision is bold, but simple. By the end of this decade, our vision is that no abortion will be unsafe and everyone who wants contraception will be able to access it. We know that this can be achieved, but it will require us to work differently and adapt to this changing world. Our new strategy commits us to being a better partner, to confronting the challenges we face with courage and innovation, and to closing the gaps once and for all. In that regard, Mary Stopes Ghana commits to contribute to achieving gender equality and universal health coverage in Ghana by enabling women to have access to accurate information that will empower them to choice and bodily autonomy. We will continue to advance access to family planning services through our existing service delivery channels. We join all of you today to renew this commitment and look forward to our continuous partnerships. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Joseph Edu, for your address. We would like to quickly invite uh, Pastor Eric Wamenor. Pastor Eric Wamenor will be delivering, he is the service delivery manager with PPAG and will be delivering the address on the organization's behalf. Welcome, sir. Thank you, sir. Good morning to all, Mr. Chairman, members of the high table, partners of SRHR, PPAG as an organization who has existed for the past 50 years. Really, we are very excited to be here this morning to let all of you know that we are also championing family planning. And PPAG as an organization, our major aim is that family planning is one of the cost effective ways that we can improve maternal health and also national development. This year's team, which is breaking myths and misconception on family planning, PPAG really want to use this opportunity to let all know that when family planning is given priority, it helps reduce a lot of mortality, especially with our women. And even as we are promoting family planning, our major aim is also to reduce or totally wipe away unsafe abortions, which in Ghana, about 11% of it brings about uh, maternal death. Now, looking at all these things, we PPAG, we are up to the fact that if all these mechanisms are put in place where we are able to reach out to each and everybody, people knowing about their rights to assess information so that they will make the informed decision and choice on their health, it will help reduce all these unplanned and unintended pregnancies. It is on this note that PPAG will continue to engage the relevant public and government agencies and execute its mandate as the leading sexual and reproductive health rights organizations to improve awareness of family planning, to enable every individual, including young people and couples, to make informed decisions on their sexual and reproductive health. PPAG efforts are unrelenting in complementing government and stakeholders' effort to undo the misconceptions around family planning, which of course we had one today. Others even say, when you put 
on a insert the IUD, it can travel to the heart and you can have heart attacks. So you can just imagine how people are having these misconceptions. It can lead to a stand that even people go ahead of saying that women, because they want to be promiscuous, promiscuous because of that, that's why they want to take this family planning uh, fact. So it is something that PPAG is really working in all our facilities, providing free services and to ensure that each and every woman at least have access so that the uptake of family planning services will be something that Ghana will really be proud of. That yes, because of this, our abortion rates, our unintended pregnancies have drastically reduced. The goal remains ensuring that Ghana's family planning targets are achieved alongside its demographic dividends. Today, let us, you, yeah, you the one sitting there, let us all break that myth and misconception. Because if we come together, I believe unintended pregnancy, that will prevent someone to get employed or will lead someone to commit or to, to have abortion service as an unsafe type will be reduced and Ghana will have its clothes to wear again and we shall develop this our mother Ghana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Wemeno, for your message. Dr. Edu pointed out to us that our country contests have changed and that gaps still remain, which are very critical to access. Uh, PPAG is saying that let us all come together and break that myth and misconceptions that are creating all these gaps that need to be closed. Apart from PPAG, UNFPA, and Mary Stoops, we do have some other partners who are also in the room. Unfortunately, they didn't get a chance to come to the podium. We'll bring them at the right time. We have Clean Thing Health Access Initiative. I see Joyce Amedo here repping for Clean Thing Chai. We also have Total Family Health Organization, well represented here. I see Demi Dria in the far end. We have Society for Family Health, Teresa. I also have here Aya Collections. We have uh, the Family Health Division of Ghana Health Services, well represented here. The Health Promotion Division is also well represented here by Seth in his uh, political suit. UNFPA fellows are also here. My organization, Healthy Pest Network, is also well represented here. I see Priscilla and others here. We were supposed to have a two-minute security alert at the beginning of the program. We glossed over it. So I invite the security man to bring it up to speed two minutes, after which we invite uh, the family, health, family planning program manager to bring us up to speed on updates. Welcome, sir. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Police, you are welcome to La Palm Royal Beach Hotel. Abdullah Salevo is my name, Security Department. Um, I do meet a great honor to be part of you to give a security brief. Um, to begin with, we have installed CCTV cameras all over, which we are monitoring each and every action going on within and around our premise. In fact, not even a drop of a needle escape our sight. Again, um, we have installed fire alarm systems as smoke detectors, which in a case of an unlikely event like fire outbreak, 
which we are 99.9 .9 sure that that's not going to happen. We have emergency exits, one on my left-hand side here behind the screen. In case of that event, please, we shouldn't run. You exit the door, there is a staircase leading to the car park. That is our assembly point for head count. And again, we have armed uniformed men, that's police officers and other security men at post. So ladies and gentlemen, your security and safety is assured with us. Thank you very much. You are welcome once again. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Chief Security. We will now continue with the program. We will invite the rep from the Family Health Division, the program manager, to bring updates on family planning in Ghana. Now, I see Madame Claudette. Thank you, Mr. NC. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, holding all protocols and standing on all protocols present, we just want to share with you some latest updates on the family planning program front. For our family planning 2030, following when the expiration of our FP 2020 happened, the stakeholder community on reproductive health came together to develop some five key recommendations which we could actually share with the Ministry of Health to be what our commitment for 2030 should be. This recommended commitment was submitted to the Ministry of Health for consideration and submission to the FP 2030 Secretariat. In addition, these commitments were presented to the Chief of Staff at the Presidency and the Director General of the National Development Planning Commission, who is a key part on family planning programming in Ghana. As a follow-up to this, a key stakeholder community forming a small TWG came together some few weeks ago to be able to answer the questionnaire that the FP2030 Secretariat sent from New York. A final document will be submitted in addition to all the indicators that were prepared at this meeting to the Secretariat for approval and full implementation by the country. The commitment is as follows. Commitment one, we want to ensure the full implementation of the rollout plan of family planning and the National Health Insurance Benefit Package. The commitment two, is to increase the government's financial contribution to the procurement of all family planning commodities. Our third commitment is to increase modern CPR, or contraceptive prevalence rate, among currently married women, or women in a union, to 44.4% by 2030. Our fourth commitment seeks to reduce unmet need for contraception among sexually active adolescents from 57% to 30% by the close of 2030. The fifth commitment, which actually looks at family planning behavioral change promotion through correct, consistent, and targeted social and behavioral change communication on right-based family planning is also a key component that we are looking at in our FP2030 commitments. The next, is our family planning costed implementation plan, which is actually the Bible of family planning programming in Ghana. The old one expired in 2020, and before the new one is actually set to go, we needed to actually have an assessment on the status of implementation of this document. We are pleased to let everyone know that this assessment has been successfully completed and the final reports are available. This report will set the tone for the development of the new one from 2023 to 2030. On the family planning on national health insurance front, last November, 
the first lady made a public announcement that there was a national or nationwide rollout of family planning on the NHIA based on the lessons that we actually learned on the FP pilot on NHIA that was carried out. The implementation was to start from the 1st of April 2022. The family planning methods on the NHIA include our injectables, our implants, which includes the implant on next and Jadel, our intrauterine device or systems, and our permanent methods, the bitubal ligation and vasectomy. As a follow-up to this announcement, a regional engagement was held for all the regional representatives just to be able to address any issues that actually are coming out or came out from the national-wide rollout announcement. An official communication has also been shared with all regions to begin the full rollout across the country. Thank you very much for your attention. That was, that was smart. Before I could organize my thoughts, Claudette had finished. <laughs> so I won't talk much. I would invite up here the Director, Family Health Division, the Director, Family Health Division, Dr. Kofi Isa, to give us the keynote address. Dr. Isa. Hello. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Yes. Um, it normally becomes very difficult when you are supposed to be reading the last gospel because everybody, Matthew, Luke, and who? Is it John? Have all spoken. So you are doing revelations. <laughs> anyway, I'll try my best. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, the UNFPA country rep, the family health team lead for USAID, program manager for National AIDS Control Program, my good friend Dr. Andifuna, all the heads of our partners here present, our dear brothers and sisters from the media, Deputy Director RCH, ladies and gentlemen. Normally, I think uh, in the past one month, if you ask Ghanaians what happened in 1961, they say well, Queen Elizabeth was here in 1961. But for us in this room, there's something more significant which happened in 1961. And that is because the Christian Council of Ghana opened an advisory center for married couples on family planning and responsible parenthood. That's as far back as 1961. That was followed by the pioneering activities of PPAG. Pastor was here to talk about that. And then the government established the National Family Planning Program in 1970 to improve access to an important component of reproductive health services for families and communities. So, Dr. Isiadu, uh, you have a senior sister program, which is a family planning program. And I can confidently say it's the mother of all programs for the Ghana Health Service. Because before all the programs started, all those started when I had already started working. But then you can imagine when family planning started, 1970. If it was somebody, at least you would not be thinking of going on pension. Is that not it? 52 years old. Through the activities of this program, the Ministry of Health, the Ghana Health Service Development Partners, we've made progress in reducing our fertility age, uh, rate and improving the lives of women, families, and communities. In 1988, the total birth of women, if a woman was 6.4. So those of us who were born around that age, you would know definitely that you always had many brothers and sisters. By 2014, it has come down to 4.2. 
Last year, there was a population and housing census, uh, which showed that from 4.4 in 2010, it has now come down to 3.6. So we started from 6.4 in 1988, and we are at 3.6. We've made a lot of progress, yet we don't have to celebrate too soon, but there's still a large unmet need for contraception in this country. When you ask about family planning, everybody knows family planning. You tell, oh, I know what it is. But then, uh, somebody says uh, he doesn't want uh, what, uh, cap studies, knowledge, attitudes, and practice. But the knowledge is always very high. The attitude the problem is, when it comes to practice, it counts very low. And the family planning program is no exception. Practice remains at 25% for married women for modern medicine, while 62% of our adolescents who are sexually active have an unmet need. If we want to list the socioeconomic and cultural factors which are responsible, we will close somewhere around 5 p.m. But suffice it to say that these factors affect all areas of reproductive health and health in this country, and family planning are no exception. Side effects, it would, this would happen to me. Top on the list, the rumors, you know, the rumor monger is, in fact, a very effective communicator. He spreads one rumor here, and by the time he realizes, by evening he's in Bolgatanga, and once it's a rumor, well, it might even make it into the front page news. The myths and misconceptions are frequently accepted, uh, cited reasons for non-use. We don't leave our own poor, uh, what do you call it, the attitudes of our health staff. Sometimes you walk into a health facility and your heart starts pounding. Not because of what condition that you have or what service you want. You don't know how you will be received. God forbid you come in and your feet are a bit dusty. Yes, why do you villagers like coming in here without washing your feet? So you quietly go away with your dusty feet, go to the back street there, and then get whatever abortion it is. And the next time, well, it comes on to Dr. Issa's death so that there's a maternal death. But who cooked that maternal death is the same health system due to poor attitudes. Secondly, family planning has become a scapegoat for any health intervention in this country which people don't want to be interested in. In the 90s, when we started family, uh, what, polio. Oh, we don't want polio. Why? It's family planning. It's okay. Vitamin A. We don't want vitamin A. It's family planning. Recently, COVID vaccines. Oh, don't let us take it. It's family plan. Why is everybody using family plan as a scapegoat? Well, it goes to the central, the core of demographics. It goes to our very existence and uh, what do we call lives as a people. The Ghanaian will say one thing in public, but in private, he will now tell you what is the gospel truth between he God and the fact. But then in public, everybody talks all the niceties. But when he comes in public, he says, this is the issue. I need family planning and all that. Why should it just be in the, what, in the night? People walk around and say, oh, this my typhoid will kill me. That means you've eaten somebody's feces. Is that not it? What they, the common thing? They can proudly say they have eaten somebody's feces. But when he says, oh, are you coming for family planning? No, no, no. Are you coming to buy condom? No, I'm coming to buy, uh, what do they call, paracetamol. The men are here. When they go to buy condom, they first start. <laughs> they are buying what? <laughs> you, know what they, you know the list. The last, last time he says, oh, is there change? Then they say, oh, then just add me two condoms. <laughs> then maybe they are adding you two condoms and your wife's friend walks in. So oh, it's okay. You leave it next time, I'll come. They say, What are you coming back to collect next time? 
Stakeholders in global stakeholders in reproductive health have celebrated this day and week since 2008 on the 26th of September as we are gathered here today. Our country was among the pioneers and celebrated the first ever World Contraception Day and which has been extended to the Family Planning Week in September 2011 and has since then become an annual event. I think that all the partners here deserve themselves a very big clap for all this innovation that we have. This year, the celebration is being held under the theme, Breaking Myths and Mixed Conceptions on Family Planning. As we commemorate this week, our main objective would be to public awareness, acceptance of family planning, dispelling the myths and misconceptions, and to advocate increased commitment to family planning as an essential component of national health and socioeconomic development. We are really at a very difficult period. If you ask the health economists, my good friends, they will never tell you anything straight. One African president said, he doesn't need a health economist who has two hands. Because, where is it? Do I use the money that I have to buy family planning commodities or I use it to buy COVID vaccines? You say, Mr. President, on one hand you can do this and on the other hand you can do that. But if he has one hand, he'll give you one answer because there's no other hand. There's no other hand for him to simply say. And that is the difficulty we face. Last week in Benin, each African country was, yeah, we have emer emergencies. But you see, that's what they are called emergencies. But even in emergencies, there are family planning issues. How do you keep these balanced? How do you make sure that the gains that we have made since 1988 are sustained? That's why we as partners are here. And as we do this launch, a media engagement, let me come down to our brothers and sisters in the media. For me talking here, I will talk technicalities. Once the media mom puts it in the language that our brothers and sisters understand, it catches fire. I might talk for a thousand years, but just on a TV or radio talk program, sense it and the next time you find that everybody down 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 to the last village so that is what we recognize the media as very important partners as stakeholders we engage each other and then the provision of free services at selected locations the health talks are in there and then for those who definitely would want that yes to be able to increase publicity you have to add entertainment the floats and other uh, community mobilization and awareness creating activists will be there. As stakeholders, these messages have to be delivered in a client-friendly manner. Don't deliver them in my most popular, uh, what, public health nurses, uh, public health nurses, you forgive me, this one was somebody I first met as her first public health nurse, when she comes for uh, what health talks, say they say we should come and tell you that this is good. So you see, she's removed herself from the message. So the woman has a uh, uh, a robber nurse. This they say. In fact, nobody ever says that. It means you yourself you don't believe in the message. So as we are delivering our messages, they should be client friendly. We should insert ourselves into those messages. You don't deliver them in some way and then you, they go back with more doubts. And for communities of forge stronger partnerships with service providers, so that when the service when they are coming in, they come and simply say, yes, we are looking for social and social service provider. They don't come and simply say, is the tall nurse there? He says, no, she's not there. Good, then we will stay. If she's there, we wouldn't stay. That shouldn't be it. When they come in, they meet everybody as a service provider and they are ready. 
to actually receive the services. And this is to address the factors contributing to a large or met need for contraception. This year's celebration also incorporates the reproductive health needs of our adolescents through the launch of a unique TV series. Since I have been growing, every generation tells the next generation that they are not correct, in quotes. Yet when I go back to the 60s and watch what people were doing in the 60s, you wonder whether we have gone or we have come. So these days, the children as well, they don't sleep in the night. But then, there was no internet those days. But there was natural internet. A whistle alone could call somebody from the room. Yeah, you don't need to text. You don't need to tweet. Just a whistle, some way of whistling. And those of us who were small boys were also what? The communicator. Go and call your sister to come and then all that. So things haven't changed very much. Is there the methodology which has changed? So in addressing the increasing rate of teen pre uh, teenage pregnancies and low reproductive health service, including family planning uptake among, by young people, today we are happy to share that in collaboration with Marie Stokes and with funding from Global Affairs Ghana, there is a national campaign rolled out of adolescent reproductive health named Atwa. Atwa as literally understood in the Akan language and translated in English is, should it happen to you? Atwa, etwa, etwa. Everybody she says what? Is what? Etwa. Okay. So, uh, media men, they say it's etwa. Uh -huh. They say, you see, I've fallen victim to they say. So, etua, which literally is, should it happen to you, is seeks to educate our young people on their reproductive health, highlighting the risks and unhealthy decisions that can affect their education and aspirations. The message we broadcast in the TV series, social media, and community outreaches to engage young people, parents, and other relevant stakeholders on key issues. As a team for this year's Family Planning Week urges us to break myths and misconceptions, we are happy to embark on this campaign to engage young people and support them with the right tools and services as they navigate puberty and young adulthood. Let me say we have reached this stage with the close collaboration and partnership we have worked all over these years. Uh, some of our, I can't mention everybody here, but UNFPA is in, USAID, DKT, TFHO, Pop Council, PPAG, Maristos. Please, if I haven't mentioned your name, don't take it as a fact that I have slighted you. Uh, that's what they are called the JICA syndrome. When you go for a meeting with JICA and they are acknowledging, you don't acknowledge them, they will cry and follow you. Dr. Issa, why did you mention my name? <laughs> Please don't fall victim to the JICA. Everybody is acknowledged. And I think that we're, the contributions of every partner is greatly appreciated. So we are going to be working with communities to join us in this campaign using each episode in this series to hold meaningful discussions with young people in our homes, school, churches, and peer groups, and the mosques, so that collectively we can empower the youth and reduce the high or med need for contraception amongst our youth. We have to make this commemoration the turning point in improving access to family planning services as part of our larger reproductive, maternal, newborn, child, adolescent health and nutrition strategic plan, which is from now, from now to 2025, and the path towards universal health coverage. Let me, at this juncture, and with your permission from Mr. Chairman and all the dignity
high table and all of us present take the honor to declare the 2022 family planning week celebration under the theme breaking myths and misconceptions on family planning and the our tv series duly launched thank you very Let's much God bless us for dr kofi isa for a brilliant delivery Thank you very much, Director. And um, say a tour. So we will look at snippets of the TV series. And so please tune in. Give your attention here. It's a youth focused. And we will be glad if you carry the message with you.
issues that they have to deal with, they will be able to handle it very effectively. I think way back, uh, we used to have things we do for love. It was a similar thing. And I think the characters in it today all evolved to become big stars, Jackie Apia, Majid, uh, what do you call them, Ajete and all, Sam Ajete and many more, Pusha and all the rest. We have all that also there, which will be very helpful. But these, and it made a big impact. So we look forward to similar thing for the current generation. As Dr. Isa said, it's the methodology that have changed, but the ways and means are about the same. So we hope to make impact with that. So please, um, you take your seat here, or you revert back to your podium if you don't mind. So we continuing with the rest of our program. And as some of you may be aware, the family planning prog uh, week, we started celebrating in Ghana way back 2010. And so each year we observe it. The launching activity itself and the various program activities that we implemented has evolved over the years. We used to do a quick launch like this and that was it. And then we added an on-site service provision. And later on, we took it to the communities to do the launch, moved around the various parts of the country with the official launch and services. Now we have come to the point where they think is an optimal one where we do the launch and after that, various partners implement activities across the country over a week period. And so we are able to make uh, much more impact than we used to do. We have um, various partners who have uh, various activities that they will be doing. But to help them as they go into the various communities to be able to address the issues, the myths and misconceptions very well, we will want to take your views. What are some of the myths? What are some of the misconceptions that you have heard or you know? We have the media here you've heard, and the service providers are here. The demand side is also here. So together, we'll pass the microphone around. Please feel free, share some of your uh, the myths and misconceptions you know with us, and we'll take it on board as we go to the various communities to deliver our activities. Once we do so, UNFPA will take the first lead in presenting to us the activities. They will be followed by uh, Marius Stoops. Then TFHO will come to present to us Society for Family Health, PPAG, and I'll call the rest thereafter. So, Seth, if you will pass the microphone around, anybody it will share any myth or misconception with us? Should we bring in with the media? Anybody? So, um, my name is Sarah, and um, a few weeks back, there was a lady in the central region I was speaking to about family planning because she already has six boys, and she still wants a baby girl, so she's still trying to ensure she gets her baby girl. Then she said, ah. I don't know if you all understand the local parlance, but she said, now, family planning, yes, me, yeah. Me fube bloaty. So she has friends who have told her that her stomach will bloat. Another concern she raised, I was like, okay, so if your husband doesn't use condom, why don't you use the female condom? She said it is not readily available. I don't know if the service is aware of this at the rural communities whether it's a misconception or it's a myth, but I'm really concerned about it, that the female condom are not on the market. Thank you very much. Any other person who will share? We want myths and misconceptions. Okay. Please stay focused on that. Um, please, one of the um, misconceptions I've heard is when you go to Marie Stubbs, you die. Please say, when you go to Marie Stoops, you die. Hello. Okay. Let's roll. MSG. MSIG. Will you want to handle this one or will you leave it and move on? Okay. 
Any others? Any others? That was a hot, hot one. Any other? There's one here. There's one here. The IUD, yeah, okay. the IUD travels to your heart and gives you heart attack. <laughs> okay. These are some of the challenges we have to deal with as we go to the communities. Set, there's a hand at the far end there. When men attempt using family methods, <clears throat> family planning methods, it can lead to erectional dysfunction. Dan, did you hear that? They say family planning, when men use it, it leads to erectile dysfunctions. Wow. Okay. Okay. Well, one of it that I have heard is when you use a condom to have sex, it reduces the fun. Okay. So please uh, take note of that so that as you embark on your community outreach and community engagement, you'll be able to point some of them out to us. Another one is that if you use injectables or implants, you get fat. And of course, women, we don't like to be fat. So it's a big issue amongst females. Okay. Set. Whilst you go there. Okay, and then there is also one that says that if you are on implants or injectables, you become very slim. You keep reducing. So it means that it sucks your blood, and so you keep reducing as a... In one breath, some methods makes you go fat. In another breath, it makes you slim. So where are we? Okay. Okay. Another person said that once she takes the uh, injectables, she sees to menstruate, so she wouldn't do that. So it's another myth. Okay. Oko. Oko, the FP2030 coordinator, focal person. <laughs> um, vasectomy makes men impotent. Vasectomy makes men. Wow. Okay. Um, my name is Filipina. Because most of the hormonal methods don't make them bleed, some of them have the misconception. Hello, we can't hear you. Please speak up. Okay. Please. My name is Filipina, and I'm saying that because most of the hormonal methods don't make them menstruate, most of them have the misconception that uh, it, the blood accumulates and causes fibroids. Okay. <laughs> Any... Anyone from our media friends that you've heard as you go around reporting or picking stories? All right, thank, thank you. Uh, coming from Upper East, it is an abomination if you are coming from the royal family and you are doing family planning. That's a serious one we have to deal with. Wow. The, so royals don't do family planning? Mm. So how do you know? How do you identify? You have to go and ask or... Okay. All right. So we've had... All right. Uh, it's been whispered to me that there's female condoms. We have some in stock. So there's no problem with female condoms. But I'm... Tap the appropriate uh, quarters and you'll get some for your place. Thank you. You're okay. Uh, in fact, the quantity available will cover us for almost one and a half years, so we have enough to go. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, you heard from the, just this small gathering. We have a cross-section of some of the issues that we have to deal with. And so, as you get to the communities to implement the FP week activities, please take note some of these things and be able to break the barriers that are preventing the occurrences of this. Okay, Dr. Isiado will want to add on. Thank you very much. I cannot come to this meeting with my senior brother and not say something. Let me address one myth. Um, HIV and STI is related. It's within the context of sexual reproductive health and family planning. There's a myth that the family planning increases HIV transmission. In actual fact, it's rather the inappropriate use and low use of family planning methods that is associated with HIV transmission. 
All right, so if you use a family planning method, like either emergency contraception or long-term family planning method, without using a condom, you can prevent pregnancy, but not HIV. All right, so at every point in time when you are using a contraceptive method, it's good to use the barrier method also. So young people will rush for emergency pill and forget that they have to cover with condoms to prevent STIs with HIV. It is not true that when you swallow the pill, there is HIV in the pill, an injection, and that is increasing your transmission. It's not true. But rather, what is true is that if you don't use condoms, you are at higher risk of HIV. Our data shows that any time condom distribution is low in our country, STI cases increase. And the prevalence of HIV among STI clients is 12% compared to the general population of 1.7%. Even pregnant women who have unprotected sex have HIV prevalence of 2%. So the value of condoms, which is a, an important tool in family planning, sexual reproductive health should not be underestimated to be able to help us achieve some progress in our country. The other important fact is that we've noticed that HIV risk is associated with multiple pregnancies. At our last survey, people who have been pregnant five times had a prevalence of about 3.4% compared to those who were pregnant only once at 1.4%. The reason is that if you are having more pregnancies, I mean you are having more unprotected sex, and then you are at higher risk. Then we notice that if the relationship is formal, it's better. 2.1% marry people, but it's higher in people who are singles and people who are just cohabiting. People who are just cohabiting, prevalence is higher. And people who are singles is higher because I meet you, I don't know you, I'm single still, but I may have a, you as my partner and it will increase. So use the contraceptives correctly, consistently, and continuously and you'll be free from HIV and free from unwanted pregnancies so that you make informed choices for better survival and development. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Isiado. Indeed, um, we couldn't have him here without saying anything about HIV and AIDS. Uh, HIV and AIDS is also well represented here by the USAID Strengthening the Care Continuum Project, uh, Egbe Kwako Bruce. Egbe Kwako Bruce is also a big champion for family planning. Kwako, welcome. So HIV and AIDS team, our partners are well represented here. We thank you for participation in this program. We also have with us here the WHO, from WHO, Dr. Promise Safoga, who is representing WHO here. Welcome, madam. Oh, please forgive me. No, you see, he had a mask on. I didn't see the beard and all that. So I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Now he's removed all. What can I say? <laughs> we will now go through the activities that have been lined up for the rest of the week before we take our closing uh, chairman's remarks. UNFPA, would you please come forward and share with us activities that you have planned for the week? So we have the slides rolling. Okay. Thank you. Okay. As the MC said, this is just to bring you up to speed with UNFPA's planned activities for um, the family planning week. And of course, we are doing this with our cherished partners. So the activities include street activism, which is happening on the 26th of September. So this is a health walk to raise awareness on family planning 
dispel myths and misconceptions and to engage with the residents of Tamale Metropolis. Our second activity is the launch of the World Contraceptive Day and FP 2030 conference, which is also happening in Tamale on the 28th of September. So this will bring together partners and key stakeholders um, to launch the FP week and also to deliberate on issues on family planning. We also have an exciting event, which is called the Family Planning um, Week Youth Summit, which is happening on the 30th of September. So this is an exciting campus festival, which is bringing together young people from tertiary institutions and senior high schools. So as part of this FP Youth Summit, we have um, the big debate, which is a debating activity on key family planning issues um, among tertiary students. We also have the smooth chat, which is really a relaxed conversation where we have panelists in, in the persons of resource persons um, to discuss issues on family planning, sexual reproductive health issues, and to give that space for young people to ask questions concerning family planning. As part of that, we also have quizzes where we have um, students from tertiary institutions and secondary schools participating in um, quizzes on family planning. And next is the radio and TV discussions, which is already ongoing. And so as and when we have dates and then the slots on TV, we would share with partners. Um, we also have a show called What Do You Know Quiz Show, which is, I'm sure you already know about this What Do You Know show that happens on um, GTV. It is a quiz show, so we are planning to have one on the 2nd of October, and we are inviting all of you to tune in on the 2nd of October at 2 p.m. to um, watch this quiz show. Um, we are supporting Ghana Health Service to hold two community outreaches, one in La Community and one in Gumwa. Um, the date is not decided yet, but when we do, we'll communicate that as well. Thank you very much. Sorry. Okay, the microphone was messing up, so uh, UNFPA, thank you very much. So we invite Marie Stopes. Thank you. So as part of the FP Week celebration throughout our four operational sectors, the Central sector, which is the old BA and Ashanti region, we would have a van announcement. I would have free services across all our operational regions. There will be community announcements, radio talk in the uh, southwestern sector, which is uh, west, the old western and central region. Our youth advisory board would also be leading the social media engagement with some live discussions and video uh, pop shops. So we know that uh, women and girls are everywhere, and as we're discussing, I mean, the church is a key area that Ghanaians are. So we also have some scheduled engagement throughout the week with some churches across our operational regions. We've also selected corporate agencies like prison officers for this week, so we engage them. We are also engaging tertiary schools uh, throughout the week across uh, uh, Central Sector, Ashanti, and Brongahafo region. And then, of course, the Atoa TV series, which you just saw a snippet of, will be airing on GH1 TV. So that's why we post it. So you stay tuned. Uh, each episode targets a specific SRHR issue. And once you watch it, like uh, Dr. said, you use the episode to have a discussion with young people around discussing contraception, assessing services, even talking to parents, pastors, the role of each stakeholder. And so we hope that we can all actively use this to engage young people throughout the week. If you want access to the whole series, you can also see us so that you can use it for your community engagement. Thank you. Thank you very much, AC. Today is her birthday. Let's give it to her as she goes. Happy birthday, AC. Happy birthday, AC. May you live long in good health and prosperity. Thank you very much, Mary Stopes. Total Family Health Organization.
Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So for TFHO, Total Family Health Organization, we are uh, starting Family Planning Week with a collaboration with UNFPA. As in their presentation, they shared that they are having a conference, FP 2030 conference in Tamale, and our family planning advisor will be speaking uh, at that conference, and we'll talk about how we can leverage on uh, uh, social marketing and distribution of FP commodities, of course, in northern Ghana. We'll also have street advocacy, again, in collaboration with UNFPA. We'll have a float and so forth across main thoroughfares in Tamale. Then with uh, radio engagement, we have booked uh, morning slots on ZA FM, Radio Tamale, Pad FM, uh, Wale FM, and Tiza FM, where we'll be sharing uh, key family planning messages uh, in the mornings people can then also call in to have their questions answered. Then for our community outreach bit, we are hosting FP clinics and these are free group or individual counseling sessions that we'll be having with people. We will do it for three days this week across all three northern regions, so northern, northeast, as well as savannah regions. Then for our salon project, you know, we go into uh, salons, we work with the salon owners and some apprentices, recruit them as FP champions. So we are having an appreciation lunch to mark the special week uh, with 131 FP champions. So uh, these we've captured specifically in Damango, Bole, Bumpogu, and Wale, Wale. Then also for our campus reproductive health talks. So we go into university campuses or tertiary institutions, uh, work with the SRCs, and then uh, we meet with the students. For this week on September 30th, we hope to uh, have 600 students gathered uh, from several tertiary institutions in the northern regions, and we'll have a special panel of um, resource persons, an ob guy, a youth advocacy person, as well as a, a family planning champion. And they will have their questions related to ASRH answered. We'll also provide refreshments and so forth. So it's an enjoyable activity for these young persons. And then lastly, with our social media engagement, of course, we'll be blasting the hashtag and the theme for this year, uh, breaking myths and misconceptions in family planning across all the social media platforms. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Demi. And thank you very much, TFHO, for sharing your activities with us. Society for Family Health. Society for Family Health. Uh, PPAG, please get ready. As soon as Society for Family Health finishes, then you take over. Good morning, everyone. At Society for Family Health, um, in solidarity with all the organizations championing family planning use, we also have some programs outlined for this special week. Um, we have our Twitter spaces dubbed Let's Talk Pleasure, which is to raise awareness on sexual health and then proper use of family planning. And also we have our data posts, which is already in motion on our social media platforms. We have a radio interview and TV interview, which is, which is also to debunk the myths and misconceptions on family planning. It will take place in Accra, Takrade, and then Kumasi. And then we, have, we also have our community activation at Nima, Medina. We also have La and Jamestown. With the Nima and Medina, we are doing that in collaboration with the Muslim Family, Muslim family Council Services. And then um, it will also be based on debunking the myths and misconceptions on family planning use. We also have our com campus activation, which is also focused on group discussions and then talking about the debunking the myths of family, the myths and misconceptions of family planning use. We have our radio skits, which 
is also in motion on farming planning to be aired on radios in Accra, Takradi, and then Kumasi in collaboration with Global Media Alliance. We have our social media storm, which I already said is in motion. And then finally, we have a taxi and trotter station activation to, uh, uh, to educate the youth on the, the myths and misconceptions of farming planning. Thank you. Thank you, sir. PPAG. Good morning. Um, so the activities PPAG will be uh, undertaking during the family planning week has to do with free services in all uh, PPAG clinics across the country. And then we also have media engagements. We also have um, the use of the community information centers to give information on family planning. There is also uh, PPAG and other CSOs as well as YAM will be having a Twitter storm today at 1 p.m. And then we also have an online 30 minute call to the Yenkasa Contact Center uh, where informa correct information on SRHR on contraceptive will be done. So if the calling, if, if someone calls into the contact center today, 26th and 27th September, and is able to ask or give right information on sexual and reproductive health as well as contraceptives, then the person will win an airtime. So that is one of the activities that will be happening today. And then we also have outreaches in our communities and then also on, on the university campus, that's KNUST, UCC, and then University of Ghana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, PPAG. <laughs> Muslim Family Counseling Services, uh, they are not here. They will be organizing FP interviews and commodity distribution with faith leaders at various celeb celebrations of the birth of Prophet Muhammad. Okay, I see the man coming. Thank you very much. I was trying to deceive your role. Forgive me. Okay. Good morning. Um, Muslim Family Counseling Services. Um, for us, we are during the celebration of the birth of the prophets around this month. And so, as part of activities during uh, those celebration programs, we are using it to uh, educate the public or the Muslim community about the need for family planning. And we are also sharing leaflets. And as um, a partner also indicated, we are partnering uh, another key partner in our communities like uh, Nima Mamobi and then uh, Medina area so that we do community outreach, which we did over um, last week. And also we we are in the Boko West and Boko Municipal. We have projects on um, uh, uh, reducing uh, reducing child marriages. And as part of it, we are introducing discussions on contraceptives use and then prevention of pregnancies among young people in school. Thank you very much. This Thank you very much, uh, Muslim Counseling of Health Keepers Network. And then the last one will be from Ghana Health Services. Thank you very much. Good morning. So from Health Keepers Network, um, Health Keepers Network in partnership with Total Family Health Organization and Ghana Health Service is organizing a community outreach services on family planning at Tunayili in the Atolon district in the northern part of Ghana. God willing, tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much, Priscilla. And then from Ghana Health Services. Okay, so good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So from the Ghana Health Service, uh, as you are aware, we are mandated to carry out these activities. So this morning, we are having the launch of the 2022 Family Planning Week celebrations and also the Atua series. And this is being done with partners. And uh, we'll also be commemorating the family, uh, the FP week 
at the regional and district levels, even going down to the community levels. So our officers at the various levels will be engaged in activities uh, in relation to Family Planning Week celebration. There will be a number of radio and TV discussions, and we are grateful to have our media friends here. We know that following this engagement, we'll use their platforms to debunk the myths and misconceptions on family planning. Also use social media to reach out to the populace and have a number of engagements on social media, on the Ghana Health Service pages, the Adolescent Health pages, and all the pages that we have, including the Good Life page on the social media handles. There'll be a number of outreach services where we have our providers go out to the communities, engage community members, provide them with education, family planning, provide services, and then also free service delivery at some selected facilities. And because of the role of the Ghana Health Service, we'll be supporting all the other partners in the activities. And these are some of the activities that we'll be carrying out in the course of the week and beyond. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Seth, and thank you for presenting on behalf of Ghana Health Services. All too soon, we get into the tail end of the first part, that is the launch of the National Family Planning Week 2022 and a tour TV series under the theme, Breaking Meets and Misconception on Family Planning. I will, at this point, invite our chairman, Mr. Dio Kimera, to give us his closing remarks. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols observed, you will agree with me that uh, this session is worth the level of effort we are putting. Thanks to all the presenters. Thank you very much for presenting such engaging key messages. And thanks to the Family Health Division for coordinating us to be here. Um, the high table and all other participants. We've heard today from keynote speakers uh, that presented uh, um, informative statements on how we can sustain family health gains, and I'll try to summarize some of the key messages that uh, were highlighted. Um, collaboration and partnership towards making family planning services available and accessible was cutting across all the presentations. So please sustain the collaboration as reflected in the week-long activities that have been highlighted, and uh, uh, strengthen the partnerships uh, to continue uh, uh, accessibility to family planning services. Um, it was also clear that this is not just a launch, but more of a fruitful event of creating awareness among ourselves. You know, sometimes when we talk about family planning services, we think about the communities out there, but it came out clear that some of the messages delivered today also benefit us who are here. So use this launch to create awareness and make FP services more visible within us and in the entire community. It was also highlighted uh, in a number of statements that uh, family planning is a fundamental human right. So nobody should be shy to fight for your right. Um, I'll quote from the uh, UNFPA representative who advised us to aim greater number to desire FP services and greater use. That is an important message. Let's aim at greater number and greater use. We might have achieved some results, but we should not be satisfied that we have done enough. Let's keep aiming at greater number and greater use. Um, there was also uniformity in highlighting the importance of making sure that uh, we let our communities know that uh, they can have choice as to when and where to have children. 
So that message should also be disseminated widely so that people know that they have choice. But how would they know? Education was highlighted that we should use the opportunity we have in our respective organizations by virtue of the fact that we access a lot of uh, uh, educational material and knowledge through these conferences to make sure that we educate our colleagues and our communities uh, to make informed choices. Um, it was also highlighted that we should address contextual issues, contextual issues that affect access. There are some uh, contexts whereby access is limited. We should address them. Um, the director advised us that uh, there are still unmet needs. And therefore, we should work towards closing the gap and making sure that everyone who wants contraceptives receives them. Thanks to Director FHD for highlighting uh, that message. Um, throughout the presentation, it was also highlighted that uh, we should facilitate access to accurate information. Indeed, during the discussion, this came out clearly that there is a lot of misconceptions and myth. And therefore, in this gathering today, uh, we should resolve to acquire more knowledge, access more information, and make that information accessible, and make sure that the information is accurate. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, is also a key message that will go a long way towards addressing the myth and misconceptions about FP. Um, today, we've also heard about the Ghana FP 2030 commitments. And uh, indeed, commitments were not only presented, but also progress made. So uh, I think we thank Family Health Division. You deserve applause for the progress that has been made so far. <laughs> for years, we have seen commitments towards FP services, but uh, pr making progress has been a challenge. So the special focus this year to outline the steps that have been taken and tangible initiatives like in inclusion in NHIS uh, are, are quite appreciated. Um, the presentation by the Family Health Division also highlighted that Ghana has had impactful trend towards fertility rate reduction. Uh, so we should not fail to celebrate our success. There has been impactful trend towards fertility rate reductions, and the numbers were presented. Uh, but as we look at those success, should be a motivation for us to uh, address the animate needs, especially the social economic factors that affect FPUs, and addressing the myth, myth and misconceptions. Um, it's difficult these days to attend any workshop or conference and we don't talk about COVID. So today I was waiting that would be the first one who not talk about COVID. But somehow, somewhere it came in. Uh, while uh, one of the presenter was highlighting the emergencies and impact on family planning services. And the key message was uh, that uh, even during emergencies, we should not lose focus on sustaining family planning services. Among the, creative, among the creative initiatives, we should also include uh, making sure that uh, 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 there is focus on FP services. Um, it has been highlighted uh, the important role that is played by media in creating awareness. Therefore, in this gathering today, uh, it was highlighted that uh, media is among the key stakeholders uh, that create awareness, and therefore, they should also equally be aware about the myth and misconceptions and make sure that they are accurately addressed and uh, uh, make sure that the right message is delivered uh, to the communities there that are looking forward to receiving these services. And in that line, 
uh, special focus uh, has been put on adolescent. Uh, thanks to all those that have been involved in a, a tour, a TV series. And I think from what we have seen, uh, it is a show uh, myself I would wish following uh, each and every series that is presented. So make sure that it's publicized so that all our communities can follow uh, as a way to educate our young people uh, 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 using different methods. So uh, a demo which was presented for ETUA uh, made it very clear that uh, using different methods of communicating uh, to the audiences, we uh, can achieve a lot towards creating awareness for increased family planning services. Um, Several stakeholders uh, to list, but a few um, UNFPA, TFHO, Society Family for Health, PPAG, Muslim Family Counseling Services, and the Health Keepers Network, and others presented on a week long activity, activities that they are going to conduct during this national uh, uh, FP uh, uh, event week. I think the key message is there is that uh, let us all participate in all possible ways. And where we can't participate directly, mobilize all those that have access to uh, the various activities that are organized so that we fully support partners that are, are going to implement uh, these activities. Uh, because I was chairing, you did not hear about USID Global Health Supply Chain PSM. But since I have the mic, I also use this opportunity to let you know that uh, at a USID Global Health Supply Chain Procurement and Supply Management, we we'll work with Family Health Division to ensure that uh, family planning commodities are available where, wherever you have the week-long activities so that uh, availability is not a problem. Uh, I'll conclude by highlighting uh, the fact that uh, uh, correcting uh, um, myths and misconceptions of uh, family planning services does not require you to wait for a formal event where you are invited and with prepared speech and uh, after detailed research, but use every opportunity to make sure that the myths are broken. Indeed, the, the program manager for National AIDS Control Program did exactly that when he, he realized that even among the myths which were coming up, there were those which did not clarify how actually uh, HIV uh, can be prevented by appropriate use of family planning methods. He delivered the message straight, and I'm sure that the media picked it accurately and would deliver it to wider audiences. So the key message is there is that don't wait for an event. Every opportunity you get, use it to disseminate the accurate information. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Program Manager, for doing that for us. Therefore, I think we all promise that uh, I will disseminate the message to ensure that there is no unprotected sex, because we have seen how unprotected sex can promote HIV, especially among uh, uh, single, sing I was mentioning single couples, but they are not single couples. <laughs> Is there such a statement? So. Among unmarried, yeah, uh, you know, unmarried interactions. Uh, so please uh, deliver the message accurately and ensure that uh, FP services as, is seen as a method for preventing HIV and not the other way around. Uh, with those few remarks, I thank you all for the trust in me to chair these sessions. And I hope the key messages highlighted will go a long way in ensuring that uh, we have accurate information that will be disseminated to a wider audience. I thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman Dio. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for our chairman. Indeed, he has made sure that the meeting has ended at exactly 12 o'clock as we promised you. So under his able chairmanship, we got it exactly 12. We have a small presentation, a, present, no, a small presentation that I invite Dr. Kofi Isa to do that for us. Hello. Um, MC, the presentation is not small. Uh, let me call Dr. Segomosis. 
Dr. Ndifuna Dio please join me mm, here yeah. for very good reason. Uh, this is Gladys and then Dr. Isiado, please. I wish we could have been more, but then um, this is not Council of Elders, so yes. For all that we have talked, um, this has been under the program leadership of uh, someone who has worked with us for a decade. And uh, if we are doing family planning week celebration, we have to celebrate somebody who has been in the forefront of the family planning uh, program. So we have a small award here for very good reason we are doing it here so that at least everybody would realize the contribution that fellow has made to family planning programming in this country for the past decade. There's an award here as an outstanding contribution to family planning programming and service delivery in Ghana. And Nicodemusly or not, overtly or covertly, we are doing this to Dr. Ya. Edu Jemfi, Family Planning Program Manager. So, uh, Dr. Segomus, it's you who will present it to her. You, uh -huh. So you can join her. Uh, yeah. uh, you can some. Uh, let me go in front here so that come this way. Yes. No, because I was calling it. Yes, let's give a very, very, very big hand. Yes, 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 we give a very, very big hand. Yes, so, Dr. Ya, yeah, we are extremely grateful for all that you have rendered to us for this decade. Uh, being in this position for a decade has not been very easy. Uh, we read all these achievements. That's why the challenges which are still there. But uh, sometimes some of our are opportunities. We just take some of the credit, but the credit goes to you. Let's give her a very, very big hand. Yes, so... So to those who don't know, she has been the family planning program manager since 2012. And so we have to do it because by next year's program, she would have actually, uh, what do you call it, moved into another phase of life altogether as a, 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 what do you call, a senior citizen. So this is the opportunity for us don't go and say I'm announcing women's ages. I haven't mentioned any age. I said senior citizen. I didn't say anything else. So, Dr. Ya, on behalf of everyone here, thank you very much. Uh, much later, the dancing and all the will come later part of the year. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. <sighs> A very pleasant surprise. I didn't know anything about it at all. So I just want to say thank you to everybody. Let's put our hands together in appreciation for all that Dr. Yeah has done over the years. We are very, very grateful. Indeed, um, now all is set. Uh, we'll bring the curtain down. 
Lunch will be at the Ghanaian African Village. So please make sure the coupons have been circulated. Make sure you have one. Uh, if you don't have, you will not be admitted to lunch. So please make sure you have one before you go there. After lunch, um, all who are eligible should pass by for a token T and T. That will be done after lunch. Then all members of the ICC should no take note that the second phase will start right here at 1 p.m. So we're taking a one-hour break, after which those who are eligible can come back for TNT. If you are an ICC member, please stay here for the second part of our meeting. So on that note, I invite um, Joyce Amedo to give us a closing prayer for the first phase. Shall we please close our eyes for a prayer? Father, we thank you so much for today, and we thank you for how far you brought us. We thank you for this very important program. And